was a rebel as a kid, mm-hmm. Cam, and I looked at life differently. I said, I don't want to live a normal life. I don't want to be the guy who puts on a suit. And so when I graduated from Indiana University, I was in accounting at Indiana, which was one of the best accounting programs in, in the country at mm-hmm. the time. And it was a top five business school, the Indiana University, uh, University Business School. And so what it was interesting was I was on an audit with a billionaire in New York City. It was the first time I've ever been to New York, and I was in Manhattan. I'm in a suit, and I'm there for two and a half weeks. Mm-hmm. And I'm spending time with him, eating dinner. You know, he's helping me with the audit and other people on the audit. And he pulls me aside, and he goes, when are you going to get out of accounting? <laughs> he knew I was an entrepreneur. Yeah. I said, what are you talking about? Now, this guy started cable around the country, Wow. okay, huge player. And I said, what do you mean? He's like, you're not much of an accountant. Now, for me, at the age of 22 years old, that's an ego blow because I'm like, you know, I'm just starting this job. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is the first audit I'm yeah, on. Yeah, and you're telling me I'm not good and, enough. And I'm not good enough. <laughs> and, and he pulled me aside. He goes, I, and he, he looked. I was a little down. He's like, that's, you don't understand what I mean. He goes, you're more of an entrepreneur. You should be owning your own business. You shouldn't be working in accounting. They should be working for you. I took a step back, and it, and it had a tremendous impact. I never forgot that moment. I went back. I talked to a gentleman out of Los Angeles who was big in real estate. We were working on his taxes, and I said, I said, I need to get into a wealth-building business. So I went back home. I was living at my parents before I moved downtown Chicago, which was always the goal when you're mm-hmm. in your 20s. And I was watching an infomercial, and it was Robert Kiyosaki and Sharon mm-hmm. Lecter's uh, book, Rich, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I watched it, and I watched that infomercial probably 10 times in a row. It just mm-hmm. kept looping and looping. I bought the book. It comes two weeks later. I read the book twice within a 24-hour period. And I said, this is what I want to do, and this is who I'm going to be. I'm going to buy assets that produce cash flow, and I'm going to be the best at it. And so with the financial mind I had and being a CPA, people think they're stiff and dorky and and (laughs) boring, but I'm not your typical CPA. And so I used it, and I left the firm, and I started my company, Alliance. And what's interesting is most people get into brokerage. I've never been a broker in the business. Mm-hmm. I've always been a principal. And for everyone out there that doesn't know what that yeah, means, say, especially because yeah. you follow Brandon, you know how mm-hmm. successful he is, it's I'm an owner, a mm-hmm. landlord. That's what a principal is. A principal is the main guy in the transaction. He's not mm-hmm. brokering the deal. He's not shuffling paper. I'm going to own the it. asset and mm-hmm. buy the asset. And so and my company is. And so I started that immediately. And we did our first deal. I syndicated an industrial building in the Chicago area. It was great. Your I was, first deal. My first deal. <laughs> it's 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 about a hundred thousand square foot industrial building. Okay, and it's millions of dollars. And I am young. I'm 23 yeah. years old. So 23. You didn't start with like a house or a no. That's insane. I went. I went because for me, <laughs> what am I doing with my I, life? For me, <laughs> well, for me, what I realized in Chicago has a weird housing market. Mm-hmm. It's it's ebbs and flows. Or certain pockets are good. Residential real estate is always school driven. Mm-hmm. Better yeah. schools are where the real estate residential markets thrive. And I learned that at a young age. And I realized, okay, if I buy a house for 150000 I sell it for maybe one hundred seventy-five, two hundred thousand. put all this work in, all this risk, I didn't see the numbers. I like bigger numbers, mm-hmm. Cam. Yeah. And so Chicago has a huge industrial market, big office market. Mm-hmm. And the biggest icons in the country at that time were in commercial real estate, the Crown family, the Pritzkers, Sam Zell. I mean, there's hundreds in Chicago mm-hmm. ar- that are around the world investing in commercial real estate. So I would look at these people. I'm like, I want to be that guy. I want to be that family. I want to have that brand. Mm-hmm. So I put this deal under contract, and I go to my godfather, Bruno Bertucci, uh, God rest his soul. He passed away years ago. And he sat on the board of a local bank because mm-hmm. I didn't know I'd get financing that yeah. that moment. I, didn't, I had to learn how to put together a deal. I knew the numbers. So I put together a great package. Bruno walked me in the bank, got me a loan. I signed personally because for me at that time, guys, 
would I have to lose? Yeah, yeah. Right? Yep. What, what is Ben Reinberg signing? Yeah. When, he's signing a piece of paper, and he's like a ghost yeah. when it comes to f- personal wealth right now, his, his net worth. And so I walked in, and I gave a presentation in the bank, and he looked at me, winked at me. He's like, that was perfect, and he got me the loan. He went to committee, and they got me the loan. So I closed. First week, I lose 45% of the income in the bill. Oh, jeez. Oh, no. I backfill it <clears throat> from a 210 industrial to a 310 industrial. I sold it three years later for a 3X multiple. Oh, my God. And that's what launched me. But it was interesting because there were so many details in that deal that taught me so many great lessons of uh, transparency. Mm-hmm. You know, I walked into, I was buying the deal from two icon national home builders that were also in commercial real estate that own huge home building companies. They were worth hundreds of millions of dollars. And they taught me something. They taught me resilience. They taught me how to be focused and present and everything. The first time I met them, they brought me in a conference room. And the conference room was about the size of this office. Mm -hmm. And they had this huge table. And it was the winter, and they turned up the heat on me. And I was in a suit and tie and sweating. Lady comes in with the fine china and asks, would you like, a Mr. Reinberg, a cup of coffee? And I was really young. And these two guys sit at the end of the table, and they looked at me and put their hand down. They said, so, young man, why are we selling you this asset? It's, where do you have millions of dollars? Have you ever done a deal? It's like drilling me. Mm-hmm. And I just sat there and kept my mouth shut and listened. And I said, um, they said, are, are you going to close? I said, here's my term sheet. I said, I have 80% of the equity raised, and I'll be ready in two weeks. I said, by the way, we have a challenge we have to deal with. And they said, what? And I, I gave them a list of the credits I mm-hmm. wanted along with all the quotes. And they said, you have a lot of nerve coming in here asking for money from mm-hmm. us. I said, look, you have a roof that needs to be replaced. You have a parking lot that's in shambles. I started itemizing. I said, and I have three quotes for each. I walked out of there with a $300,000 credit, Mm. closed a few weeks later. And that's what started my career. So how did you as a 23-year-old, how much did you have to raise for this? I raised probably about a million eight. A million eight. How did you as a 23-year-old have the connections or just have the, the capabilities to raise that much money? Kim, it's a... Phenomenal question because I look back and I said, "How did I do that?" And, and a lot of it was shoe leather. Mm-hmm. So there was no internet at the time; it yeah. was just coming online, and it was phone and setting up meetings and asking for referrals. And so every meeting, suit and tie, you know, my men's warehouse or sim suit with the polished shoes, nice tie, walk in, we'd sit down, I would show you the numbers. I was paying a great return. I gave away most of the store in equity. Mm -hmm. And it was a property in one of the best suburbs in the United States because it was 20 minutes from O'Hare Airport. There was a brand new development called the Glen that was coming on board. It was, they took a Navy base and made it residential, retail, office, industrial, and in one area. And it was just going to be spectacular. So I had all these captains of industry that own businesses that God forbid I have a vacancy in this property, I could draw from. Mm -hmm. And so I told the story, and I created a story, I showed the numbers, and I built trust and rapport. And because I was polished and I understood the numbers and I memorized the story, I was learning about how to sell people naturally over through the process. And I would gauge myself what worked, what didn't work, and I grinded. I grinded 24-7. Sunday, Saturday, whatever I had to do, I did it to raise that money. And it was a lot of mindset. I was not walking away from that deal, not raising yeah. that mm-hmm. money. I told myself, I said, Ben, you have to raise this money. You busted your butt getting the loan from Bruno. Yeah. Now it's time you got to shine. And so, and I carried that with me through my career. Mm-hmm. I, I love a challenge. I love when people say, so Cam, one of the things that I love is when I hear people say can't, won't, yeah. shouldn't, wouldn't, because my mindset's I'm like, I can't, I can't even absorb that that statement, yeah. that word, because I don't believe in the word can't. I don't believe in excuses. I think excuses are for weak people. 
Mm. And I don't mean that out to people that take offense. That I do that because it should motivate you is never have an excuse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Figure out how can I get that yeah. done? What resource can I tap into? Mm-hmm. And that's what I learned at a young age, and I've carried that through my career. And so I'm not the guy who listens to excuses. Yeah. I'm not the guy who wants to hear contractions. I want to hear how are we going to get done? You know, just to, just to harken back to the beginning of that, your journey here, mm-hmm. I think a lot of young people use their age as an excuse of why they can't invest, why they can't get into things. And like, oh, yeah, I would, but I'm only 23, 24, 25, whatever the thing is. Even people in their 30s are like, ah, oh, I'm not 50, right? But I love that your story illustrates when you have just confidence and clarity and a deal, like people will overlook the age. Like mm-hmm. if, you're, if you're confident in the deal and you're well put together, you lay out the story and I can see what I, I could care less if you're 19 or 90. Like it doesn't, ma- it doesn't matter. And so as soon as you get over that that mindset of like, oh, my age is restricting me and say, okay, no, mm-hmm. yes, I know, of course I'm young, but I'm going to do it anyway. So I love that your story illustrates that. I, a question for you around that when people come to you that are young, and I'm sure they ask you this question, it's like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to get into. Should I do residential, commercial? You did commercial, but residential is easier. What, do you, what advice do you give young people today about getting into real estate? Well, I say just do it. Just move forward. A lot mm-hmm. of people wait and they hesitate. Well, when I have enough money or I have a balance sheet that's big enough to do this yeah. and that. And to go back to your point, which I think is really important that I learned at a young age, is a de- if you have a good deal, you'll raise the money. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. That's what I loved about syndication. People are like, well, are you going to... I'm like, I'm going to raise the money. This yeah. deal is incredible. Because yeah. I, I knew the story. I knew how to protect my downside. I knew how to finance it yeah. properly. Yeah. And so, and I knew how to protect the investor's capital. And when you can do that for everyone out there, I don't care if you're a teenager to someone in your yeah. 70s or 80s, the deal will sell itself. Now, how you present it, whether it's your confidence, your capabilities, your track record, that's mm-hmm. a different component of it. But when you're getting started and I didn't have a track record, if you walk in and understand the numbers, understand the deal, understand the downside, and be able to tell the story, you will raise the money. Yeah. I can guarantee you. I've lived it. I still do it, and I believe in it. And here's the thing that I teach is do your homework. Yeah. Leverage into resources to do your homework. Ask questions. Most kids, and I call them kids in their 20s because I'm 54, <laughs> even though you guys are all adults, <laughs> how I look at it is be vulnerable. Mm-hmm. It's tough when you're younger because you have to build up this house of cards of like, well, I got to get a loan. I got to do this. I got to raise equity. I got to show my friends that I'm, I'm doing this because I'm worried about what they're going to say to me, which you shouldn't just worry about yourself. And so your mind starts playing tricks with you. Mm-hmm. And so the advice I can give everyone out there listening is just believe in yourself, learn about the deal, master it, master it. Don't learn the information, master the information. Yeah. So you don't have to look at anything. You'd be like, I'm going to pay an 8% preferred return. Uh, here's what's going to happen when we sell the property. Here's how long we're going to own it. By the way, here are the issues we could be facing. Let me explain that to you. Here are the vacancy rates in the market. Here's the construction of the building. How much parking do we have, depending on the asset class I'm playing with? So for me, when I bought that industrial building, I was able to tell all these stories. Mm-hmm. I knew when it was built. I knew about the tenant, the credit worthiness of the tenants. And when you do that, you become the expert. Yeah, That's what people want. If you're going to shepherd capital and be a fiduciary of capital, people want the comfort level. And it's really the optics of this gentleman or woman knows what they're doing. Yeah. They're going to they're gonna give their heart and soul. Yeah. And it's that commitment, that love, I say, to a deal that allows you to raise equity. Mm-hmm. So to get back to your point, it's not about age. It's about doing your homework. It's about being prepared. It's understanding the market. Mm -hmm. And all these little things carry to the ability to get loans, to get equity. And I get asked this question all the time. And a lot of times the biggest issue is people are lazy. Mm -hmm. They won't do their homework. 